This happened a while ago, and it still creeps me out to think about it. I used to drive for Uber, and I've met many different people. Most of them were pretty cool, fun to talk to, and some were iffy. One particular day, I wasn't too busy, so I went driving around, waiting for my phone to ding. Finally, it did. It was this guy who lived at an apartment complex. He was dressed a little strangely, but I didn't think anything of it. Well, he gets into the back seat and puts his legs up on the back of the passenger seat. Once again, I didn't think anything of it. He wasn't hurting anyone, and I figured he was comfortable. As I'm pulling away, he tells me that we're actually going to a different address than the one he put in, which did strike me as odd, but I obliged his request. He gave me the most confusing directions ever, and it was a bit of a longer drive than I anticipated. I'd started to get nervous when he began to ask me questions. It was like he was interviewing me or something. I answered each one ambiguously. The questions were mostly about the healthcare system and how much he didn't like it. It wasn't until he asked me if I was afraid to die that I became really nervous. I mean, I'm screaming in my head that I really hoped we were near his destination. I just wanted him out of my car. Instinctively, I told him I wasn't afraid to die. I tried to maintain my lighthearted conversation without him realizing how nervous that he made me. As I drove, I also noticed that he put a glob of some substance under his nose, something like petroleum jelly or whatever. That also struck me as odd. As we approached a stoplight for the umpteenth time, he finally told me his stop was just on the right. It was a house. I pulled up into the driveway and he got out. Instead of saying one word to me, he went to the side of the house and creepily disappeared into the bushes instead of going to the door. I was curious about what he was up to, but I took this chance just to get out of there. I left and called it a day. I went straight home after that. Hey all, it's great to see that Uber now warns users to always check the license plate before getting into a car, but my story happened about a year before that was put into place. A few friends and I were spending New Year's Eve at a house party. The New Year hit, the party was winding down, and my friend ordered an Uber. Mind you, all four of my companions were some combination of pissed drunk or baked out of their minds. I was definitely buzzed but by far the most sober one of the group. I assumed the role of mom friend by corralling the group to the street to wait for the car. It was freezing, pitch black, and the street was completely empty. The car pulled up, and my friend announced that it was our Uber, so everyone started to make their way over. Out of nowhere, I get this sick feeling in my gut. My lizard brain kicks into overdrive and tells me to get the hell away from that car. That's when I realized the car was missing an Uber sticker. Since my friend was too drunk to care, I grabbed her phone to check the license plate. This was not our Uber. I realized this at the same moment that my friend walked over to the driver's side window to ask if the Uber was for Sarah. He told her that it was. I yelled to her that this was the wrong car, but she was too far gone. But he says he's our driver, she slurred. I channeled my inner camp counselor and yelled at her that this was not our driver and that the car had the wrong license plate. Instead of walking away from the car, she asked him why the license plate was different if he was here for Sarah. And I shit you not, this fuck tells her that he put the wrong license plate on the car this morning. She was so drunk that she believed him and almost opened the door to get inside. I yelled at her to get the fuck away from the car right now because this is not our driver. Finally, she starts to walk away, but the driver grabs her by the arm and tries to force her in. One of my friends next to Sarah pulls her away, but the guy looks visibly unhinged at this point and ordered her to get in the car. The first thing I could think to do was take my phone out, start filming the car and yell, Hey, 
Asshole, I'm filming you. This got his attention, and he was down the street before I could say another word. Not a second later, our real Uber pulls up. We were all spooked, but they were drunk, tired, and ready to let it go to keep the good vibe going. All I could think of was some drunk girl leaving a party alone and forgetting to check the license plate. So, as the only one who wanted to do something, and also the only one under 21, I decided to call the cops. Not great in hindsight, but I'd rather get busted for being just shy of 21 and kind of bust than let somebody get possibly kidnapped and whatever else. It all turned out just fine and they caught the guy before he could find another victim but we never found out what his motive was or what happened after that. The best part of the ordeal, though, was the one guy in our group and his reaction. I've known him since kindergarten, and he's one of the smartest people I know, but he was so cross-faded that he actually believed the guy was, and I quote, just a nice guy trying to help us out. He tried to convince me not to call the police, because it would only ruin the guy's night. He said it was New Year's and he should have some fun. He still vehemently denies this ever happened. But, in conclusion, always check your Uber's license plate. This happened three years ago while my former relationship was ending. I was about 27 years old. Me and my ex-boyfriend weren't living together anymore. We were separated for a few months, but not quite broken up yet. I had just found out from his twin brother that he was keeping me as a backup while having fun with other girls, so I decided to end things. It was my birthday. I was a bit emotional about this whole situation, so I decided to go to his place and end it properly, face to face. I took an Uber and went to the other side of town. I got there. We talked and ended things on good terms, given the situation. Now it was time to call an Uber and go back home. This was happening in November, on a rainy night, at about 2am. My ride came, and I got in. I was just looking out the window and thinking. After five minutes or so, I noticed that my Uber driver was looking at me in the rearview mirror every second when he could take his eyes off the road. I brushed it off. This wasn't the first time when it happened, and I was honestly too sad to care. But then I noticed he slowed down. A lot. This is when I started to pay attention to my surroundings, but without giving him the sensation that I was doing so. I noticed that he was a tall, thin guy, 25 to 30 years old. He looked like he wasn't taking very good care of himself and his car was actually pretty dirty. I was just hoping to get home safe and faster at this point. Then, out of nowhere, he started talking. You're beautiful, he said. Thanks, I said after a long pause. What's your name? After another long pause, I whispered my name. I realized that he could see it in the Uber app anyway. What a hot name. I've always wanted to have sex with a girl named that. I was in total terrified silence, and then he started looking at me in the rearview mirror again, staring at me. He started talking and rambling without pause, but he was expecting clear responses and reactions from me. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I quickly chimed in. What a shame. I wanted you for myself. I didn't know what to say. I just sat there in silence. But I don't mind the boyfriend. Let's go somewhere else. Come on. Change the address in the app, because I can't. Only you can. I know a place where we can go to be alone and smoke some weed. No, I can't. Take me to the address from the app, please. I said to him. At this point, I started to pay close attention to the route he was taking. I was so ready to jump out of the car if the situation had gotten really dangerous. Then he puts on a local rap song which I've never heard before. The lyrics were very explicit, describing what a singer does to a girl during sex. They were extremely explicit lyrics. Hear that? 
That's how being with me would be like. I would do everything like that. You'd come back, begging for more. I was in total silence. At this point I started messaging my ex, telling him what was happening. It was also a good excuse to not have to look at him or reply. What do you think about that? I just stayed sat in silence, texting my ex. I asked, what do you think about that? He yelled. My heart dropped. I froze. I haven't heard this song before. I replied to him. Do you smoke weed? No, I replied. Smoke a joint with me. No, thank you. Are you home alone? I could call it a night and go to your place and show you what I'm talking about. My heart was racing so bad at this point. I was so scared and shaking so hard. I was home alone, actually living alone. I decided to start recording him from here on and send the recording to my ex. No, my parents are waiting for me, I said to him. Uh, that sucks, man, but we can stay in the car. I'll join you in the back seat. We'll find a spot where it's dark. No, I need to go home. I'm tired, I told him. Come on, you'll enjoy it. Trust me. Where did I put that weed? And then he started searching for his weed. My ex listened to this part and called me. I was so relieved when I saw my phone ringing. I answered and I made sure that the driver would hear that I'm on the phone with someone. He kept on talking, but I didn't hear much because he seemed to be upset about my phone call. And he was mostly talking to himself. My ex was furious, but told me to say things out loud like where I am, when I get home, and of the stuff like my mom texted me and is waiting for me, to say that I will call him when I get home and everything like that. I ended the call and the driver asked me if that was my boyfriend. I said it was. He kept silent for about five minutes, and I was so anxious to get home. We had about five more minutes before getting to my address. When he saw on the map that we were getting close, he started asking me again to go somewhere or stay in the car with him, to smoke with him, to tell him everything about me and my life, that he thinks he fell in love, to break up with my boyfriend. His speech was getting scarier, and he was getting more and more anxious that he couldn't convince me. He was turning to look at me, stops at lights so he could turn to me. After what seemed like forever and shaking like a leaf, when we got in front of my building, I practically jumped out of the car, and he said, No, no, don't go to your apartment. Let me come with you. I ran and entered the building. I didn't turn on the lights in the staircase because I didn't want him to see the floor I lived in. I stood there in darkness and peeked out the window to see if he was gone. He wasn't. He was looking at the floor, probably expecting to see where the lights turned on. I couldn't even enter my apartment because I'd left the lights on in my hallway and he would have seen me in there. I waited five minutes and he slowly left. I quickly entered my apartment and locked everything, but I did not turn off or on any lights, just so it wouldn't seem like someone had gotten home or something. I went to peek out the window to be sure that he left. He indeed did leave, but to my surprise I saw him back and he was parked this time. I was scared out of my mind. I know that many of you would say I should have called the police, but in my country, the police don't come for stuff like this. They barely show up in an hour if someone's being beaten or something. So there he was, just sitting there. Then I get a message from an unknown number. It was telling me to come back downstairs because he's waiting for me. I froze and cried at this point. It was like my life was about to change because of a 30 to 40 minute ride with an unstable person. I didn't even know how he could get my number from the Uber app. I didn't reply. He sent a few more messages. I remember one in particular that really creeped me out. He was asking me to at least smoke a cigarette with him on the phone just so he could hear me breathing and smoking. I messaged back saying to leave me alone. He started calling my phone and I blocked the number. I was afraid that he would get so angry and try to enter the building and find me. I was looking out the window from behind a curtain and I saw that after I blocked him, 
When he tried to call and couldn't, he started smashing his phone against the steering wheel. He finally left after 40 minutes or so of staying there. I stayed at the window, watching for another two hours or so. He didn't return, thank God. The next day he messaged and called from another number, but I blocked that one as well. He tried once more one year later. I was honestly so surprised, but I blocked that number too, and thankfully I have not heard from him again. I reported everything to the Uber app, and I really hope they took measures, but honestly I don't understand why nobody before me reported him. It didn't feel like it was the first time when he did this. It was somehow so easy for him. It's one of the worst experiences I have ever had. When I was 13 years old, my mom had a breakdown and could not work for over a year. This caused us some economic issues and we lost a lot of things in our house. Our car was our main problem. It broke down and my mom didn't have enough money to get someone to fix it, so all she could do was get rid of it. Without a car, we all started taking the bus and train everywhere. Me and my brother took the bus to school and our school was kind enough to get us taxis to drive us home. One day, I was outside waiting for my taxi to come. The taxi usually comes about 15 minutes after I end the last session, but that day, it was about 50 minutes late. Then when it finally came, I jumped inside and he drove off. I was a little sour that I had to wait almost an hour, but I didn't complain since I was just happy to be on my way home. Since I took the taxi home every single day of school, I had started recognizing the drivers. The driver that day was new. I hadn't seen him before. He had a full beard and an ACDC cap on. The first thing he did after he drove off was apologize for being so late. I told him it was okay and he started up a conversation. He asked me if I wanted him to put some music on. I said sure. I discovered quite quickly that he had the same taste of music as me, so I felt right at home. I had no worries at all. A week or so later, I was waiting outside for the taxi. I realized the taxi was late again. A thought came to my mind that maybe it was that driver. He had quickly become my favorite driver since he had been so friendly and talkative, but I hadn't seen him since that one time. And just as quick as that thought came to my mind, the taxi arrived. And surprise, surprise, it was him. I decided to sit at the front this time for some reason, and we start up a new conversation. I remember his phone's notification tone. I thought it was funny, so I laughed a bit, and that started up a conversation about how he found himself to be funnier than most guys. He asked me if I agreed, and that's when warning bells started ringing in my head. I shook it off, however. Everyone says weird things sometimes. It's okay, right? After a little bit of talking, he asked about my age. Viewing it as an innocent question, I answered that I just turned 15. He pulled out a piece of paper and a pen, and then came the question, Do you have Snapchat? I got silent for a while. My alarm bells were wailing like crazy, and I knew that this was wrong. He was like 30, and I was 15. He was my taxi driver. Why would I want to talk to my taxi driver in my spare time? I was scared to turn him down, though. I didn't know what he would do if I just turned him down. It's not like he was forcing it on me or that he was trying to be intimidating, but I just didn't trust that it would turn out alright if I turned him down. So I said yes and wrote my username on the paper. When I came home that afternoon, I felt really guilty about it. It didn't feel right at all. I got into the house, went into my room, sat down on my bed with my phone in front of me, and I just stared at it. I was terrified that he was going to add me on it and start talking, but I also wondered if I misspelled my username and that he would question me about it the next time he picked me up. And then after 10 minutes came the notification. He added me. He had sent a, hey. I pulled myself together and started to chat with him. 
At first it was innocent, but then it started getting weird. For everything I said, he would come up with a way to compliment me or be flirty. For example, I asked him, So where do you live? Small town just right outside of yours. Why? Do you want to come visit sometime? He replied. I also asked him, What do you do in your spare time? Fishing. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. He responded. I've always wanted to try it out, I said. We can do it together sometime, he told me. And then came the creepiest question. I'd started catching on to what he was after, so I questioned him about it. Why did you even add me? What? I thought you liked older men, he said. Yeah, it was creepy. And no, I don't like older men. He had apparently thought that since I liked having a conversation with them, that I liked him or something. So the day after, I was terrified that he was going to pick me up. I thought about blocking him or telling him to stop talking to me. But I was a 15-year-old girl, and he was a big 30-year-old grown man. What if he got mad? God knows what he would do the next time he picked me up as he was in a sour mood. To my absolute relief... The taxi that picked me up that day was a different driver, and as quick as I got in, I told him about what had happened. I asked him to tell his boss or whatever to maybe reassign him so I wouldn't have to see him. But luckily the boss was smarter than that. The next day the driver told me that he'd been fired and was never going to do another taxi job in his life. Apparently he'd been preying on a lot of other girls too, but none of them had spoken out about it. I blocked his snapchat and haven't seen him since. This was a Sunday night. I was at the airport about to request an Uber when I checked the lift prices. $20 cheaper to take a lift. So I requested one and almost cancelled it because it was taking a while to find someone. When finally a driver was found. Pretty much as soon as I entered the car and we started driving, he saw where I lived and started talking about murdering people in the city I lived in. And it wasn't just a one-off line either. He kept going on and on about it. How we'd get the cold sweats afterwards. And decided he didn't want to feel that so we'd try not to. During this, I'm texting my boyfriend, because this guy is just making me feel really weird. I wasn't really trying to converse with him at all, so all of this was unsolicited information. Then he was saying how he was going to do a haunted house and make it seem really lame. Like it was over, and then once you leave, when you thought you were safe, he'd get you. I asked him, how would you do that? because I feel like a lot of people are really aware of their surroundings, and I would definitely see you coming. And then he said, You never know. I might just get you tonight. I laughed and said, I don't think so, as he's literally pulling up to my apartment. When we parked, he just kept talking. I said okay, bye, and I had to unlock the door myself. When I got out to grab my luggage from the trunk, he almost took off with it. It was really weird when he picked me up and dropped me off. He'd just stand behind me like a weirdo. It was really uncomfortable. He definitely knows which apartment I live in, and I'm pretty sure Lyft fired him. I was visiting a family member in a subacute rehab facility. There was an issue with my family member receiving a bill for a service that wasn't used, and I was going downstairs to speak to someone about it. As I was waiting for the elevator to go downstairs, a woman who was also waiting smiled at me and started to talk to me. I didn't think anything of it because most of the time, people just do the standard friendly small talk. Until I went to make a phone call, that is. While I had the phone to my ear, she kept asking me questions. 
Are you calling an Uber right now? She asked. No, I replied. I live in the same town as you. Let me take you home. Don't call an Uber, she said. I'm not going home. I'm not calling an Uber. I just have to talk to the receptionist about something, I said. But I can take you home. I don't mind. Let me drive you home, she said. Thankfully, the elevator door opened, and I quickly walked to the front desk. I started talking to the person at reception, and she just stood on the side of the desk, staring, listening to our conversation. I just ignored it. I kept talking until I guess she finally realized I wasn't leaving, and then she left. Luckily, I wasn't leaving because I don't know if she would have been waiting outside for me. I know that woman could have been trying to be nice, but the way she was pushing and acting, I don't think that was the case. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Do me a favor and hit the like button and comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe as well, and hit the bell icon as well so you can stay notified whenever I release a new video. Now if you fancy checking out my channel memberships or Patreon, or any of my social media, all my links can be found in the description below. And as usual, I want to thank my patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. So a huge thanks to Sarah C, Linda, Austin, Tegan, Chris and Donna, Cassie Fowler, Pretty Girl 215, Christy, B Nick, Lil Smart, Do It, K, Something Edgy, Pretty Girl 215, Borderline Betty, Sarah C, Blazed Goddess, Christopher, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Lady Drackard, Sue, Absinthe Alice, Rochelle, Astara Ray, Monique, Crafty Kel, Monica Level 8, Emma, Sean Gorman, Jennifer L, Skittles MM, Gabrielle, Serafina Nightingale, Jennifer C, Misanthropia, Fluby, Ryan, Brenda, Rudy, Christina De La Rosa, Noosh, Lulu Rogers, Fire 05, Linda, Shan, Jody, Sarah P, Kathleen Fenton, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Alex, and Courtney Maxwell. I hope you guys enjoyed that and are doing well.